Greetings. It's great to be with you. My name is John Palm. I'm superintendent of Port Townsend Schools, and I'd like to share some information with you about the upcoming school levies that will be running on February 12, uh, 2019. The proposal we have uh, this year has actually two levies. One is the Educational Programs and School Support Levy, formerly known as an M&O levy uh, or an EP&O levy, and that's a replacement levy. Uh, the other issue is a capital levy, which is designed to provide uh, funding for our plants, facilities, and uh, technology infrastructure here in the school district. The proposal to voters is to consider two three-year issues, and I'll be reading a little bit of text here, uh, that the first issue, the EP and SS levy, is uh, at a rate of $2,500 per student, which comes out to be around $3 million in 2020, and about $9.6 million over the course of three years. And our capital levy is uh, a total of $3.625 million collected over three years. Uh, both levies really should be considered replacement levies. Our last capital levy collected from 2012 to 2016, and our, our, our regular EP and O levy, or EP and S, S levy now, uh, finishes collecting in 2019. The local levy actually uh, used to be a, a larger amount of our budget than it currently will be. Uh, it makes up 16 to 18 percent of our overall budget here in the district. And uh, that's really important because uh, the state has limited our local levy collection uh, to that $2,500 per student. So we're looking at a reduction uh, of around uh, $700,000, uh, which would be uh, for 2020. And uh, each year, uh, that, that's going to be about what we'll see. Now, these are estimated numbers because we're funded based on enrollment. So some of the things that the educational program and school support levy provides um, have to do with uh, professional development for our staff. Uh, a lot of uh, funding goes in to support students with special needs that uh, is over and above what the federal and state governments will provide for in those areas. Uh, we, uh, in most of our uh, uh, funding areas, we actually staff uh, more than what the state provides. And so our local levy supports extra staffing in the classroom for teachers, paraprofessionals, um, and other classified employees. And other um, supports are in the areas of library materials uh, and school nutrition and wellness. Some uh, here in Port Townsend might know that we have a scratch cooking program for our food service uh, that's subsidized uh, pretty heavily with our local levy as well to make that happen. Some other areas of support from the uh, school support levy are extracurricular and co-curricular activities, which includes all sports, um, other clubs, uh, additional music uh, support, and innovative programs such as our garden program, our STEAM program, and our advanced placement programs in the high school. And specifically here in Port Townsend, our place-based initiative and maritime studies uh, programming is supported by local levy. Switching gears to the capital levy, the capital levy um, was collected, as I mentioned, for four years between 2012 and 2016. The uh, items that were supported were technology infrastructure, uh, security cameras, roofing projects both at Blue Heron and the high school, uh, phone system upgrades, uh, gym upgrades at the high school, resurfacing of the Blue Heron track, and uh, lighting upgrades. This year, or the new capital levy would be supporting um, the um, ADA access, which at the high school means uh, elevators. We're planning to put at least one, hopefully two elevators. One would be in the main building, and um, the second elevator would be at the annex building. So the capital levy would help support that project, um, which is partially funded from the bond, which built Salish Coast Elementary School. We also need to continue to support student technology and uh, infrastructure for students and staff, and uh, additionally, safety, security, and other um, asset preservation in all the schools. The current and proposed levies, I'd like to talk a little bit about the rates. So currently, we're paying $1.53 per thousand for our uh, educational programs and operations levy. As I mentioned earlier, the levy is a replacement levy for educational programs and school support. That is, the previous levy will expire at the end of 2019, and then the new levy, should it be 
approved will begin in 2020. The combined rates of our educational program and school support levy and capital levy um, are proposed to be the same rate that's been paid in 2018 and for just the EPNO levy. And um, the McCleary decision really had to do with overall school funding. And then in the last legislative session, the legislature decided since they were going to be increasing the state property tax to support schools, that they were going to restrict local collections. So the slide you see, the 166 per thousand uh, is a 2019 voter approved levy rate. However, uh, 106 per thousand is what uh, the restrictions bring us down to being able to collect. Therein lies the new proposal is a replacement for that levy at almost the same rate and then the uh, proposal for the additional capital levy brings us to that uh, 2018 level. And as you'll see the three-year prediction for rates as per our county assessor is at about a combined rate of about 153 in 2020, 154 in 2021, and 155 per thousand in 2022 for the combined rates. And just a note about local taxes. So the, the combined rate between these programs really does keep our local taxes uh, steady between uh, 2020 and back to 2018 with a dip in those um, rates in 2019 so that in, there would be an increase from 2019 to 2020. Um, but we feel that uh, this uh, proposal uh, really stays within the levels that's been supported in the community in the past. Some of the questions that we might be receiving are, uh, will my taxes go up if uh, these issues are supported? And the answer is no. The combined rate of the educational programs and school support levy and the capital levy, as I just mentioned, would be about the same rate as we're currently paying. Um, however, keep in mind state property taxes were impacted. And so one of the questions might also be is, does the state fully fund education now that the McCleary case ruling has been uh, litigated and uh, the Supreme Court has ruled that the state has uh, is funding uh, schools amply? And really what that uh, court case had to do with was the prototypical funding model that uh, the legislature put together for schools that the, um, the uh, legislature has considered that to be funded and the Supreme Court agrees. Um, however, that prototypical model does not fully fund what we provide for our students here in Port Townsend or in many school districts. That's why we run local levies. And so the local levy supports many of those programs I mentioned, which includes extra staffing, enrichment activities, co-curricular programs, smaller class sizes, and a lot of our classified uh, support staff. Uh, this is different than a school bond. Levies and bonds are different. So a bond was passed recently. Those are long-term issues. The bond was a 20-year issue, and that supported the construction of Salish Coast Elementary School and one of the elevators at the high school, um, or at least part of one. And uh, so with the rising construction costs we're all experiencing, especially here in the Puget Sound area, we've been able to um, make sure that the school was built, and we did set aside bond money to support the elevators. However, we need some additional dollars uh, in order to make those happen. And finally, if uh, anyone that's uh, listening to this uh, is a senior citizen or a person who might qualify for an exemption from levies, we would uh, encourage you to contact the Jefferson County Assessor's Office at 360-385-9105 to find out if you are, um, in fact, could be exempt from paying these taxes. In closing, I would just like to quickly read our mission statement and then make a couple of comments. Our mission here in Port Towns is through community-focused maritime place-based projects, students develop effective thinking, effective action, and effective relationships. As a result, our students demonstrate meaningful accomplishments as, as engaged citizens. And I would say that um, both of these issues are intended to um, continue supporting that mission here in Port Townsend. Uh, thank you. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at Port Townsend School District um, or any of our staff in the, in the building's principals uh, or directors uh, here in Port Townsend. Thank you very much.